Hey everybody, James Kerr here, and today we're going to be looking at uh, Crossroad Blues by Robert Johnson. So uh, we'll be breaking down um, each of the phrases um, in this iconic recording um, for the first two choruses of the, of the blues there, and uh, breaking them down in detail, looking at the left and right hand techniques um, involved. So I included the full performances there of me playing um, the song there um, so that you hear it up to tempo and can, and can see it up to tempo. And um, also to make the case that, um, that, I, that I'm, a, I'm a big believer that Robert's recordings were not sped up as has been uh, you know, recently speculated. So um, after, as someone who, who studied these um, this music and uh, played and, and, and sang it, um, I'm, the, I'm the firm conviction that they were not um, sped up as has became kind of a, a fashionable, interesting theory about a decade or so ago. Um, and there's a number of recordings on, on YouTube of um, you know, slowed down versions speculating that that's how it actually sounded. Um, so I, there's some interesting points to be made, but uh, I respectfully um, disagree and um, am a firm believer that Robert um, tuned to A flat for Crossroads, um, or very close to A flat, so it's using a G tuning, or what we would consider the standard G tuning, um, but it's closer to A flat, so higher, so um, which would sound like this. And that's certainly not without precedent. We can. We can look at the, the great recording from Willie Brown, uh, one of Robert's mentors, um, Future Blues. So I urge you all to check out Future Blues by Willie Brown, um, and you'll hear this exact A-flat um, tuning. Um, so that's certainly my belief, is that Robert, John, Robert was tuning to A-flat, and then it was capoing the third fret for um, Crossroad Blues here. Um, and that makes it very playable there's there's no reason it can't be played as you heard me there just playing it at pitch and, in the, and singing it in the key um, so if, if I could do it or make an attempt at it certainly the great Robert Johnson um, could have been playing it at that tempo and that in that key and singing it in that key um, so there's a couple compelling reasons why just briefly um, I think I'll do a whole nother video going um, really because this this topic really is a great interest to me but uh, breaking down all the points in the in the, the arguments on both sides um, so you can stay tuned for a full video discussion about that but just briefly some of the most 
compelling uh, reasons why I think they were not sped up. Um, again, the A-flat tuning, we've got Willie Brown, we know that he tuned to A-flat. We've got a photo of Robert, of course, with the capo, one of the famous photos of Robert Johnson, so we knew he, we know he used the capo. Uh, nothing exotic there, which of course you could raise the key. Um, the fact that there was five different recording sessions uh, that Robert made, um, so the, somehow that all five of these sessions was magically sped up to the same exact um, degree so that there's no change in his vocal characteristics between them, even though they were seven months apart in some cases, um, doesn't make sense to me. And then maybe most importantly, the fact that uh, none of his contemporaries um, who heard his recordings ever mentioned anything about um, how they sounded different or unusual or, or that they sounded sped up to them. We, we've heard of no um, account by any of the Robert's contemporaries or family members that who, who knew his music well and heard it regularly in person um, that his recordings were sped up at all. So um, there's no uh, magic there. I believe he turned tuned to A flat. There's a tendency I know to want to explain away um, whether it's through uh, you know a deal with the devil or through um, it must be they they were sped up you know. But I, I respectfully disagree. I think Robert was was just special. Uh, his playing was on another level um, than those at that time and still to this day. And uh, his vocal range was higher than. Uh, but there's certainly nothing unusual about singing in the tenor range. Uh, listen to Willie McTell, and we could certainly hear um, a comparable range on those recordings, or even uh, Lemon Jefferson. Um, so that's my theory. So yeah, I'll give you the tuning reference notes here for two to A flat. Again, it's not right in tune with the, um, before we get to the lesson, um, a couple more things um, that, uh, it's not right in spot on with the tuner. Of course, Robert wouldn't have been using a tuner um, in the, the, this concept of A equals 440 hertz. It was not written in stone historically for music. Obviously, he's very much in tune with himself. He's spot on in tune. It sounds amazing. So it's not in tune with our modern or tuners, um, A equals 440 hertz. But there's nothing unusual about that. So, you know, certainly Renaissance, Baroque, um, instrumental practice. Um, you know, the, the instrument is part of what dictates the tuning, the, the, the song itself dictates the tuning, the vocal range of the singer, and then of course the use of the capo on, for guitar players we can adjust. So um, he's close to A-flat, but it's not spot on with the, the tuner. Um, it's a solo performance, so there's no other musicians involved to tune to. Um, so. That's what I believe Robert did on this recording. Of course, Robert used a, a several different tunings on other recordings, but several of his most famous bottleneck um, recordings, including this one, Crossroad Blues, uh, Walkin Blues, which was recorded the same day, uses this exact same uh, tuning, and I believe the capo on the third fret again. Uh, Come On Out My Kitchen also is, is, is in this exact same key. Um, I believe that he did also in this tuning with the capo on the third fret. And then Traveling Riverside Blues, I believe he's also in the A-flat um, tuning just like this, but on that one he's capoing the second fret. Um, so that's my belief after studying the music and singing it. Um, and as I say, I'll try to do a whole other video discussion about weighing in, in, in full detail all the pros and cons or the, the arguments on both sides there. Um, so let me give you the specific tuning notes in this tune, tuning. So it's basically like a G tuning, um, but sh sharp raised. Or you can consider it an A tuning, which was also not uncommon, but tuned down a half step. So um, the intervals are exactly the same as the G tuning, but we're closer to A flat. So let's get in tune with what I've got here. So first string, that's my first string open. Second string, third string, fourth string, fifth string, and sixth string. So use your ears, and then when we capo the third fret, you'll find that that matches exactly what we hear on the on the Robert Johnson recording here. Um, and um, yeah, and then also the thumb pick. So we know that Robert used a thumb pick um, from one of the 
the three photographs that we have now of Robert, um, he's very clearly using a thumb pick. So I would urge you, not a necessity, but um, certainly the thumb pick gives you a little bit more volume and clarity on the bass notes. We know that Robert uh, used a thumb pick. Um, and, uh, and then, so, we'll get into uh, the lesson. So um, I think there's a, you'll find there's a lot here to, to get into, both with the slide, bottleneck playing, and the finger picking um, techniques that he was using uh, to come up with such a, a brilliant solo arrangement. So if you're getting something out of this video, if you enjoy it, please do uh, subscribe. I hope to do many more of these uh, blues uh, videos and performance videos on my channel here. Uh, if you'd like to go more in depth and uh, and take some, some lessons with me uh, via Zoom, uh, get in touch with me on my website or leave a comment in the below. I'd also love to hear your thoughts about this uh, tuning and what you think about my theory that he's tuned to A flat and K point third fret and uh, as uh, demonstrated in my performance and video there. So do leave a comment. Love to hear your thoughts on that as well. All right, so subscribe and let's get into some Crossroad Blues. Okay, so this is how I, I believe that uh, Robert uh, tuned and played um, this tune, Crossroad Blues, after uh, listening and studying and singing the song myself. As I mentioned, I'm a, a believer that he did not, um, or that the recordings were not um, sped up. I think Robert tuned, as I mentioned, to uh, close to A-flat and then uh, capoed three for this uh, tune and use that exact uh, same tuning also on Crossroad, on um, Walking Blues, uh, Come On In My Kitchen, um, Traveling Riverside. So here are the reference notes. If we're in that tuning I gave you there um, with the open strings, which is basically like a G tuning, but it's sharp closer to A flat. So this would be the first string. If we put the capo on three, which you're going to do for this uh, song, if we want to play it in the same key and um, sound exactly like the recording or sound um, in the same key and tuning that he used, this is how I believe that he did it. Um, capo third fret, and then our first string would sound like this. So that's a, these will be reference tuning notes for this tuning with the capo. That's your first string, and then second string. Third string. Fourth string. Fifth string. And the sixth string. So standard G tuning, what's normally considered a G tuning except higher, right? It's tuned to closer to A flat. Not spot on with the tuner. Um, as I mentioned, that was not uh, a consideration, um, but he's certainly in tune with himself, tuned, tuned closer to A flat, and then capo three. And then you'll notice when we get into these licks up here, um, part of the argument about the fact that he the, the recordings must have been sped up is that this would make it way too high up above the body of the guitar. But if we're using this tuning with the capo here, it works very nicely that uh, notice this, uh, this kind of sensual sliding up lick is right at the body of the guitar. I can reach it very comfortably if I'm using this tuning. So this is my theory, um, and I'm, I'm a big believer this is how he did it. Um, and then... Um, there's no first-hand accounts that I'm aware of of what finger Robert used the slide on. Um, I use the slide on the third finger or the, the ring finger of the left hand. Uh, certainly lots of great players put it on the pinky of the left hand. I think either one is acceptable. If I'm working with my students and they're starting out, I would suggest putting it on the third finger. Um, we know Sun House put it on the third finger. So that's, I think, maybe an argument in favor of the fact that Robert probably put it on the third finger but certainly there's great players who put it on the fourth finger I mean on the pinky we would call the fourth finger the left hand um, so either one if you're already you know somebody who's who's used it on the pinky for a while and you're that's what you're comfortable with that's fine I think it's either one is you you can the the song is playable and the style is playable um, 
I use the third finger. So that's the finger I'm going to be talking about. Um, so I'm a big believer also in having my students um, learn these blues um, classic recordings um, by ear. So I, I don't typically use tab when I'm teaching this particular style, although there's some other styles of playing uh, bluegrass dobo where sometimes I do supply uh, tablature. Um, use your ears. Use the rewind. Use this video uh, to pause and rewind, watch the hands, you can slow it down even further on the settings. Um, the tab is going to, you know, just not have the, the key ingredients such as the timing and the, the feeling in there. So it, in my experience, it's just going to remove you from your ears, which is what you want to be using. It's This is an oral tradition. So use your ears as much as possible. Take advantage of the video format to slow down, rewind, pause, uh, slow it down even further if you need to. All right, so if we take a look at that intro, I'm going to slow it down. Uh, Robert plays it if we set a metronome to it about 90 beats per minute. Um, so we'll slow it down, slow down the intro to about 50. This is 50 beats per minute. Um. So we're doing that central sliding um, lick up here in this um, tuning with the capo up to um, 15. So I've got a dot there on my guitar. It's basically if you've got a 14 fret guitar, which is I think ideal for this style, um, 14 fret. We know the Kalamazoo that Robert, one of the guitars that we know Robert played was a certainly a 14 fret Kalamazoo. So I think this side, style is ideally suited to a 14 fret um, acoustic. And in that case, I've got a dot on 15 there, but it's right where the body joins the guitar. That's where we're going to do that central kind of classic sliding lick on the top two strings. Um, but it's, as I mentioned, quite accessible in this tuning if you're using the tuning I'm, I'm talking about here with the capo. It's not inaccessible way up here like some people argue against, um, you know, these tunes being um, played without being sped up. Very comfortable to do that here. It's, in fact, it's pretty much right. It's right the fret where the the body, um, right above where the body of the guitar joins. So the timing on this intro, uh, I hear a lot of people play not quite in the right timing here. We got to consider that first note coming in on the upbeat. Uh, one. So it's not a downbeat that he's starting. Robert's timing is so um, sophisticated. So one of the most amazing things about his playing is just his sense, sense of timing. Um, so a lot of people, when they're trying to learn this by ear, they're, they're not quite feeling where the downbeat is in the way he plays the intro. So the way I'm feeling that is it's, he's actually starting on the upbeat. One. And then you're sliding up to 15, and then this repeated picking index and middle on the right hand. Very important. Um, and then just this repeated picking of index middle. One. And then on that last one, slide up to it. Otherwise, I'm just staying there, maybe a little bit of vibrato, not, I don't hear a lot in it his vibrato there. So pretty much just a straight bar until the last one. One. And then that nice downbeat on the um, fifth string open, which is our root. That's our tonic in this key. So in this tuning, we got the, the one chord, the root is on the fifth string. In this key, it's, you know, close to a B. So basically to concert pitch, he's playing this um, song close to, to B, but not spot on with, with, you know, our A equals 440 hertz, right? So it's a solo style. He's tuned his, to himself. Um, it's not spot on with our tuners, but if we're tuning to him, it's closer to B than B flat. And then the five chord root is on the sixth string. So that's very important to the style with your bass notes with the thumb. My, my root in this key is on the fifth string open and my five chord is on the sixth string open. So he'll take advantage of those a lot. So again, the intro with the timing 
and this is slowed down as I mentioned. He, his recording is more about 90 beats per minute. This is 50 beats per minute. Three, uh, one. And then we've got a, a minor third in the root. So that's 14 on the second string, and then um, the, the 15 on the, the third string, which is also the root. Let's get the feel for that. So I'm assuming at this um, point, if you're watching this lesson, that you're already familiar with the basics of slide playing, blocking, muting. Um, uh, you can keep an eye out definitely for um, a more beginner a video lesson about bottleneck playing that'll be up on my channel here um, if you subscribe. But this with this lesson, um, jumping into Crossroads Blues, I'm going to be assuming that you're familiar with the basics of blocking and playing with the slide. Um, but on that lick, 14 on the second string to 15 on the uh, third string. So if we put that together in time, one. And then down here, uh, so that's our third string with the capo, that's three. Another great lick there, so uh, third string, third fret. Um, but uh, in this key, that's actually the sixth fret. So that's third fret. I'll call it the third fret as if this is the knot, right? Just to make life easier, right? Three, oh, it's fine. And then you're sliding up to the root on the first string, which is the eighth fret. Or if we're considering this the nut, that's five. Mm. And then if you're when you're sliding up to that root on the first string, make sure your bar is nice and level so you don't kind of choke the sound of that, depending on how high the action is on your guitar. It's easy to choke that first string one. Keep it nice and level. It's a great lick in of itself. And then if we put that together, one. And then this walk down, um, typical walk down turnaround. Which I'm doing on the fourth string here. On uh, the, we'll call it three. Two, one, open. Walk down from the seventh of the chord. Descending chromatically down by half steps there. And then with the right hand, you're going to be picking four thumb on the fourth string, index on the third, middle on the second string. So. And then. That's a slide up on the um, fifth string three. into it up to three on the fifth string and then it ends on the sixth string open which is our five chord basically a turnaround and then you're ready for the top of the form so from that turnaround So the whole intro again um, at that tempo. One. And then the timing here where he starts singing, um, where you come back in is the tricky spot. So a lot of the the hardest parts about his style and about this tune in particular is just the timing, right? It's amazing, uh, his uh, his sense of timing and the inter intricacies here, but coming out of that uh, turnaround. I went to the crossroads. So he's 
coming in on um I went to uh, Crossroad is where you come in with this uh, 15, 15 again on the first two strings. Mm -hmm. I went to Crossroad. So that's so it's the timing. I went to Crossroad. And that's just 15, 15 with, the, with the picking the top two strings again, which we hear a lot of on this tune. And then there's some bass notes in there. I went to the and then um, just kind of keeping a quarter note pulse with these open string. And then a little 3-0 with the, with the slide there on the fifth string. Another one on fell down. fell down. So he's really echoing the uh, vocal rhythm there with the slide on fourteen on a fifteen, sorry, which he does a lot of on the beginning of each one of the choruses here. So coming into that, I went to the crossroad. Uh, phrase coming out of that um, beginning of the first verse. So he's got mm -hmm. I went to the crossroad Bell, 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 And then here and Again the 15-15 on the top two strings And then uh, a third string with a thumb there on 15. And that's three, oh, three, with the capo three, three, oh, on the first string. Mm. And then an open um, fifth string, our root. Mm. Nice uh, three, three on the top two string, the first and second string. Again, picking with index and middle, which is my typical blocking here with the right hand. Index and middle on those top two strings. Mm -hmm. to three there on the first two. Mm. Mm. And there's a two in there. That's how I'm doing that. So after the threes, mm. Some more fifteen, three, and then up to the root, up to our uh, five there. So that's a, a fantastic, you know, worthy of a lesson in itself. Just that one uh, little solo phrase there in the first verse. Mm. Some, the finger picking comes in. All right, so then the root after this. I switch 
switching to fingers here on the uh, three on the first string. So there's a bass. On. So there's a lot of that. Also the alternating of using the slide um, for fills in these riffs on 15 in the beginning of the verse. And then he'll transition to finger picking for this um, basically makes a, oh, a, a seventh chord, the dominant seventh chord. And I'm doing that with my slide on the third finger with my second finger on the third fret on the first string. And then with my picks on the right, with my fingers on the right hand, I'm on three, third thumb on the third string, index on second, and middle on the first. And then he'll change from the seventh to the root on the first string. So I'm going, that's... Uh, Basically, it just goes from a, se a, se a dominant seventh chord to a one chord triad. But these thumbs on the downbeat. Is a big part of the style is getting those thumb notes, the roots on the downbeat. That's like the left hand of the, of the piano doing that bum chick style with the left hand that a lot of this finger picking um, comes comes from um, is a big part of what makes it such a, um, a a wonderful solo arrangement that how he gets those thumb bass notes throughout um, is what gives the the impression almost of having two guitars when you hear when you hear those uh, root notes interspersed on the the down beats with the either the finger picking or the slide <laughs> Also gives that syncopation. Your your fingers are giving the syncopation while the thumbs are on the the downbeat or the left hand. So these are coming in on the upbeats, right? My thumbs on the downbeat, and then the syncopated notes are with the fingers. There's a lot of that, but then there's an amazing amount of variety in how he does that um, phrase, as we'll see in the other spots in the in the in this in the tune. So this is leading into the four chord, and then we go to the four chord. So at this tempo, um, at fifty. I'm doing that with a bar on five, and that's our four chord. Right, just, so just barring where the four would be. Um, and then with the pinky, when I'm using the bar, my slide on the third finger, I gotta use the pinky for, for the slight bend on, um, with the capo, that's three, five, seven, um, eight. So I'm barring five, and then this little bend is on eight on the first string. And without the capo, that's 11, um, right before the double dot. So again, the thumb is going to be right on the downbeats. One. sounding riff in this open tuning so that's basically the sound of it the slight bend there with the pinky on um, 11 there and then the straight bar and then there's a little three, oh, three on the sixth string and then an open uh, fifth string root what he does every time he goes to the four chord in this uh, in this song um, so we can get a lot of mileage out of that just about the subtle variations in the way he picks it on a, one of the verses but it, it's pretty consistent that that's how he does the uh, four chord every time in this blues <laughs> Thumb 
is on the downbeat, one. And then you're picking on the upbeat. So my thumb is making the jump from the fifth to the third string. Fifteens. With a, again, an O, uh, o on the fifth string on the downbeat, and then ending on the three on the third string. Oh, sorry, the the fifteen on the third string. And then here's another finger picking, a riff here that is. Uh, Starting on the root here on the first string on five. Downbeat again on the on um, the fifth string open on the downbeat. And that's five three zero oh. on the, all on the first string. And then it's just open strings here with the chord. So all the fingering is on the first string when he does this uh, kind of finger picking licks that he in, or phrases that he intersperses here. It's really all everything that's fretted is on the first string on, when he does this on the one chord, and um, all the others are open. But it's the variety of the timing that's um, what makes it so challenging. So here. a three on the um, third string. Make sure you hear that one a lot. And then back to that same opening chord with the pinky on five. Picking three, two, uh, third, second, first strings with um, thumb index middle. So if you're not, your right hand isn't really developed to, um, you know, be pretty strong with that uh, type of chordal picking here. Think of it as a grab. Um, try to move from the big knuckles here um, and picking these together without bouncing so much. And so just try to, kind of a classical guitar technique of just moving from the big knuckles with as little bit of a bounce as you can will improve your accuracy. And then that goes into the five chord. Here's the five. A few times to say, is that really? That sounds to my to my ears what he's doing there. Um, so that's second finger on the uh, third string second fret, first finger on the uh, second string first fret, and then he's got the I'm using with the slide on the third finger the fourth finger on the first string third fret. Uh, that's, if we just played the chord straight, that's the, the voicing. But he's it's it's really a, a bend there, a slight bend on the first string, so he's not just you know strumming that as a chord. But if we just played the voicing straight, interesting. But it functions as a five, a five seven chord. So coming out of that, um, let's see. Just lifting the pinky on the uh, first string, three, and then just lifting it up to O. Ah. So, th 
this is really more just a passing note. So it's he's, it's not as if he's playing that um, five seven with this uh, note on the top. It's more like a lick on the top of this five, you know, a, a seventh chord. But that's what the that little melody note on the top is going to be doing. So that's um, again the downbeat with the thumb. two fingers down three oh, oh, three oh. coming into that and then from the finger picking part before that After that, another finger picking. So I think the hardest part of this um, song and this arrangement that he plays is the finger picking stuff, right? It's not the people kind of tend to focus on the, the slide playing in this song, you know, for good reason. But actually, what's most difficult is the finger picking. So he was, you know, in addition to his incredible bottleneck playing, um, such a great finger picker and studied all those great, uh, you know, finger pickers like Blind Blake you would have been listening to and people like that. So there's some, the hardest parts in the tune, I think, are actually finger picking if your right hand isn't so developed. And this is the last one in the first chorus. the first string and then these are just open open on the downbeat of each um, verse, the end of each chorus, um, or the end of each, you know, time through the 12-bar the progression, he ends with the root, not with the seventh, and not with this alternating, staying on that uh, five on the first string. So that's just downbeat on the thumb on the fifth string. second verse so that's the whole um, first verse of the tune um, and then we'll start a little bit of the second verse here but uh. all right so that's the first verse and then the second verse starts each one of the verses with our 15 slides up there um, in fact does start each one of the verses with 15 slides um, so coming out of that
teens. We're pretty clear on, although there's some slight variations. Uh, but then coming out of that, this time it's a little more, it's a little longer what he does on the first string. A little more aggressive on the, um, the 15. He's hitting the uh, ending on the, the first and second strings on the top. And then, and then that's uh, five, three, three, da, 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 do, do. Um, Again, just fretting the first string. Everything else is open here on this one chord. This all fits over the one chord of the blues. And then O, oh, O, oh, O, oh, O, oh, three, O. Oh. Uh, five, three, three, O, 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 three, O. Oh. And that leads us in on the four chord. Again, so the finger picking, there's some slight variation. Each one of these seems like it's slightly different what he does on this part. And that's where the intricacies of the finger picking, as I mentioned, is maybe the hardest part of uh, the tune. And then this 15 sliding, I think you'll get the hang of pretty, pretty quickly if you're familiar with the style. But um, getting the finger picking just right on these um, kind of little transitional parts on the one chord, I think it's probably the hardest thing to keep straight. <laughs> which leads us into the four chord again, which the good news is pretty much exactly like the first time. And then he does that little more aggressive um, 15 one on this one as well. Ending on the the top first and second string. And then this is new here. This is, um, again, thumb as always, just right on the downbeat. That's the left hand on the piano, just keeping it steady. And then the fingers are doing a lot of syncopation here. This is, um, a unique one here which goes five three two with the fingering three two oh so five three two oh all picking uh, open strings on three and two but on the first string and then five three five and then that leads us into the five chord on here on this little slide up. Ain't nobody seem to know me. Right after me, we're gonna slide up to the root on the um, fourth string, which is five on the fourth string with some nice vibrato. So try that one. Ain't nobody seem to know me. So coming into that, the finger pick. a little walk down it's a little kind of under what he's singing so it's not so um uh forefront in the mix but it sounds to me like he's doing a little bit of a walk down there as a turnaround ain't nobody seem to know me and then he ends that chorus with the uh, uh let's see Right. 
So from the slide up um, on the five chord, ain't nobody see me know me. Everybody pass me by. The sun going down. And then we're into the third verse. All right, so that's the first two. Um, the first two verses, which gives you really the bulk of the, you know, it's the thematic material that he then uses for the, the duration of the song. So it's kind of a combination of these four um, fifteens with the slide, um, this finger picking stuff on the one chord leading into the four. But there's some variations on that. He doesn't do it the same way twice, but that kind of um, five, three, and then on the four chord, pretty consistently, always doing that uh, riff that we talked about, and then uh, and then uh, the five chord is buried a little bit, um, and then the the turnaround. But based on those first two courses, you got the pretty much the bulk of the thematic material that he then plays for the rest of the the song. Um, so if you'd like to go into a little bit more detail, we could certainly spend a full hour or a couple lessons on this um, song. So get in touch with me for, for Zoom lessons, um, either on my website or in the comment section below. Um, so it's a, it, you know, it's one of the great masterpieces of, of, the, of Delta Blues, as we all know. So a lot to sink your teeth into there. Make Take advantage of slowing it down. Um, the video format, you can even slow it down even further in the settings. So a lot to work on there. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. Really have fun uh, playing this one. Make it a long-term project. Uh, do subscribe. There'll be lots more um, blues uh, lessons and performance videos on the channel here. Uh, so subscribe if you got something out of this and enjoyed this uh, lesson or, or the playing in there. Um, and I'll see you next time.